This is the fourth tutorial um, in a series on creating a simple experiment in Pebble. And here we are building a little experiment that has people to determine whether a number is even or odd as quickly as possible. So here is tutorial four. And we will open it here and see I'm just building on what we've done before. Um, but now what, I wanna, what I'd like to do is have the logic associated with seeing a number and making a response all encapsulated within um, a function. And earlier we looked at how you create the function start. And every Pebble um, experiment has to have a start because that's where it looks first. But you can build other functions as well. So I'm going to build a function called trial. And before we look at what trial looks like, um, trial is going to handle displaying an image or displaying a number, collecting the response, and maybe figuring out if it's correct or not. And all I want to have to do is give it the number here, and it will handle all of that. So I'm going to say trial 3. So I'm going to create a function called trial. And if I give it 3, it will show 3. If I give it 4, it will show 4. If it will give it 1,000, it will show 1,000. OK, so if we scroll down more, this is the function um, that I've created. So previously, we've used easy label as a, a fast way of making a label. So within the trial function, every time I'm going to create a header, a stimulus label, and a footer. These are the things that are, it's going to say, give basic instructions to. It's going to give the stimulus to. And it's going um, to give uh, instructions about how to make a response at the bottom. Now, I could have put these, I could have defined these up here as well and maybe made them global and only define them once. What's going to happen here is every time trial starts, it's going to create these labels, use them, then destroy them. And maybe um, sometimes that's not exactly what you want, and you, you could have brought these as global uh, headers and footers and just relied on them having existed. But this makes it a little less portable because I can't use this. I wouldn't be able to use this in another um, script unless I also brought those labels forward. So this, these are defined exactly like we did before. The only thing I'm differently I'm doing now is I'm also using G video height. We hadn't talked about this before. So this is going to be at the exact center of the screen. Um, this is going to be 200 from the bottom, and this is going to be 100 from the top. And we'll see if the screen size I created um, is going to fit um, in a little bit. So it's going to create those. It's going to draw it. So right immediately, um, it's going to place these things on the screen and draw it. And then uh, there's a there's some code here that collects response and looks for a response time, and then um, prints something out. So we'll be able to see um, sort of what's happening on each trial, and then returns a list. So let's go over each of these things. So let's look at here. Previously, we'd use a function called wait for any key press. But I actually only want people to press one of two buttons, the left shift or the right shift key. And so instead, I'm going to use wait for list key press. Um, this bracket here tells it is a way of defining a list, a series of items. And so the bracket says, I'm going to, I'm, the list of key presses I want to specify include one called L shift and one called R shift. This is how you specify sh pressing on the left shift and the right shift buttons. Um, if you want other options, most um, most keys on the keyboard are just specified by their letter. Um, but there's sometimes special codes like this for arrow keys and control keys and things like that. So whatever you press, it will get bound to a value response, whether it's left shift or right shift. OK. So once the draw. Uh, function is is executed and these things appear, I'm going to start timing. So I'm going to record the time that that happens. Get time is a function that it, that access a, accesses a millisecond timer. Uh, it's a millisecond timer that starts when the Pebble script is started. So it's just um, whenever that's started, a timer begins. And whenever you ask for get time, it will tell you this 
milliseconds since the whole thing began. Uh, it's large enough that you can run this for many, many hours, and you won't it won't overflow. So um, that's you shouldn't be concerned about that. Um, but I'm going to record time right at the beginning of the response and right at the end. And so the difference between the second response time and the first response time is going to be the time of my my the time of my response, how long it took, or the resp the RT. Um, just for convenience, I'm going to print this out, and print the print command allows you to print out text. Here I'm going to take the number, which is the thing I passed in, and the response, the response I made, and the response time, and glue them all together by saying by using the plus. And so a plus will add two numbers together, but if I add a number and a piece of text together, it'll create text. And so I'm going to use commas here to make sort of a comma-separated line. Each one of these will get a have a number added to a piece of text, then a text added to a piece of text, text added to a piece of text, and a text added to a number, and it will always end up being a number that combines all those together. Um, I'm also going to return these as a list. So just like this list here, I'm going to return those three values using the return command at the end of the of the function. So I'm not doing anything with the return value, but I could capture this by saying like a is equal to that, b is equal to that, and c is equal to that. Since I don't capture it, it just sort of disappears. All right, so let's run this and see what happens. Welcome, press any key to begin. Here I have my instructions. When the number is odd, press the left shift key. When the number is even, press the right shift key. So three is odd, I press left. Even, I press right. A thousand is even, I press right. So you can see how um, I did this whole thing three times, but I didn't have to write this separately three times. I could just give it each one of these three, four, and a thousand once within this trial function and um, it would execute all of this code for me. So now if I look down here at the bottom of the debug messages, I can see what happened when I printed things out. It said three, that was the first thing I gave it. L shift was the response I made, and this is how long it took. 2386, that's 2.3 seconds. Four, I made a right shift, and it was 2100 seconds. And a thousand, I made a right shift, and it was 1942 um, milliseconds. So uh, that's the basics of trying to uh, build an experiment where you usually have a repeated sequence of stimulus and response, and it's usually a very good idea to encapsulate those within a function like um, like trial, so that you can just pass it um, the argument that you want each time. Um, the other thing to note is that this global variable was created in start. Um, lab was as well. But lab is not accessible in trial. And so I couldn't actually use lab in trial, but I can use gwin, and I did use gwin. If I wanted to move these into, uh, if I wanted to use move these into the start function, I could, but I'd have to make sure they're global and then access gheader and gstim and gfooter. All right, so that's the end of uh, tutorial four. And in the next tutorial, we will focus on how to make these a little smarter and figure out whether you got it correct or not.